year 2022. Welcome to the new session of ABF Online Talk, Passion for Birding, and I'm really excited. Today is the first talk of the new session. Well, actually, it's a panel discussion. This is also a, a new form of ABF Online Talk. And we're going to Hokkaido, Japan. Wow, is that something great? You know, we, we, we have um, Hiroko Okamoto from Wellbird State of Japan with us last year talking about the conservation of the, 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 the work of uh, Wellbird State of, of Japan. But this time we're going to Hokkaido for birding. Of course, you know, behind birding, behind ecotourism, it must be a uh, conservation work. But we are full of passion for birding. And uh, with great pleasure, we have three speakers, Mr. Kazu Hiro Arai, Dr. Kasumi Ushiyama, and Mr. Yukihiro Kominami with us. Um, Miss, I know Kazuhiro for many years, so I always call him Kazu. And I follow traditional Japanese way to call the other two speakers, Kasumi-san and Kominami-san. Kasumi is the founder and president of uh, Daisei-san Nature School. He is a board member to many organizations, including Ecotourism Japan, Win Ainu. Ainu is the uh, an, uh, indigenous tribe in Japan. Hokkaido is minus 20 degree now. Oh my God. It's, an, it's a winter birding wonderland. So let's go visiting the birding hotspots in Hokkaido, guided by our friends from Hokkaido. And Kazu will lead the panel discussion. Kazu, you have the floor now. Okay, thank you, Victor. And hi, I'm Kazu Arai from Dai Setsuzan Nature School, which provides um, eco environmental education, uh, ecotourism, and nature conservation in Dai Setsuzan National Park. I also run a tour company called Adventure Hokkaido, which runs nature tours in English in Hokkaido. Um, today, I have two bird specialists for you to know and enjoy Hokkaido better. Uh, first speaker is Katsumi, who is a wetland manager of Miyajima Numa uh, Water Bird and Wetland um, Center. The second is Yuki, um, the chief ranger from um, Shunkunitai Nature Reserve Wild Bird um, Society of Japan. So first, um, let me share what Hokkaido like from my point of view first, and then I pass it on to two speakers later on. Um, I'll share my screen, and I think it's shared. Is it shared? Yes, but uh... make it bigger. You make it bigger. Yeah, make a full screen. Yes. Well, okay. That's great. Thank you. So these are the speakers, Katsumi, Yuki, and Kazu, myself, from different area of Hokkaido. Um, and here is where Japan is, very basic. And Hokkaido is the northernmost island of Japan. The uh, latitude is between 42 degrees north and 45 degrees. So a bit more than we are more closer to the North Pole than equator, you see. Anyway, um, here is the size of Hokkaido. The area um, is about um, 83,000 square kilometers. The population is about 5.3 million, but Sapporo city has 1.9 million people. So the rest has very um, thin population all around that land. Um, and then you see the distance, kind of you see the um, how wide or big or small Hokkaido is. 
But if you cross Hokkaido, then you kind of spend seven hours driving from the west to east. And then from north to south is about eight and a half hours driving. That's about our size of the um, Hokkaido. And then the little tip that Victor also mentioned, thank you very much, is that um, the Ainu, the indigenous people of Hokkaido, well, um, Japanese people only came about 200 years ago in Edo period. And the year 2020 was actually the 50, no, 150th years, memorial year. It means a uh, memorial year that Japanese came. So it means that um, we kind of deforested very quickly in the last 150 years after the Japanese people settled. That's kind of a sad part of the, um, um, history to the nature actually. Anyway, um, I want to share, um, there are two lines you should check to understand the characteristics of Hokkaido. One is the black line here. It's called Blackiston line between Honshu and Hokkaido Island. This line is found by Mr. Blackiston, an uh, English scholar who founds a, um, what do you say? Kind of a faunal boundary between two islands. Um, in the last glacial age, when the sea surface is lower, all the Japan's islands were uh, connected except Hokkaido. So there were no um, migration to Hokkaido from Honshu, the Southern Islands. This isolation made Hokkaido flora and fauna very unique. Another line is this mountain range here. Um, in the middle of Hokkaido, which is Daisetsuzan mountain range and Hidaka mountain range. Um, these mountain ranges with the seasonal wind make two unique Hokkaido environment. Um, I won't go into the uh, mechanisms here, but I want to, you to remember that the West, Western Hokkaido um, it's heavy snow like Niseko, you know, Oop. and the Eastern Hokkaido side, the characteristics of the weather is less snow and very dry. Um, I want to emphasize that, um, um, so in the East Hokkaido is less snow means that the soil gets really frozen and cold soil influences vegetation. So I want to say that the east side and west side, the environment is very different. And thus, uh, there are very unique two uh, different environment in Hokkaido. Well, this is from me. So now I want to um, pass it on to Katsumi from Miyaji Manuma for his presentation. The floor is yours, Katsumi-san. Um, how do I stop? Okay. Okay, thank you, Kazu-san. Can you hear me? Okay, uh, I'm Katsumi from Miyaji Manuma. Hi, everyone. And, well, yeah, I'll just start my talk. Oops, something wrong. Okay, can you, can you see this? Okay, uh, I would like to very briefly introduce uh, the wetlands and water birds in Hokkaido, and especially uh, focusing on geese because I'm a geese guy. I work for the Anati Day Working Group of the East Asian Australia Asian Flywheel Partnership. 
And, but also, also I will uh, introduce uh, very briefly about the uh, whole part of the wetlands. And I think this is very uh, familiar to you, the red crown, crested crown, crane. Uh, so there are many water birds in Hokkaido because uh, Hokkaido is an island of wetlands. 80% of the marsh in Japan is concentrated in Hokkaido and within that 80% is also concentrated in the eastern part of the Hokkaido. But there are many uh, different uh, wetland types in Hokkaido and there are 13 Ramsar sites. And the uh, wetland types are very uh, diverse. Uh, there are, all, of course, uh, freshwater lakes like this, where I come from. There are many big marshes. And also in the mountain areas, there's lakes and marshes also. And these wetlands uh, provide uh, many wet, uh, e ecosystem service to the people in Hokkaido and, of course, to the tourism. And thinking about water birds, uh, uh, this is the major water bird habitat in Hokkaido. Uh, the, there's a Ishikari lowland, which is a good migratory flyway for the uh, migratory water birds in the central part of Hokkaido. And this is mostly constituted of uh, paddy fields, and which the water birds can feed in, and freshwater lakes uh, where the water birds will take roost and accumulate. And on the eastern uh, part of Hokkaido, uh, there is uh, Tokachi Plains. Uh, this is a farmland area, but uh, without paddy fields. They mainly uh, make beans and wheat in this area. And there's a big river called Tokachi River uh, where many geese and water birds are. And there are also wild areas in the coastal uh, part of the Tokachi area. And the eastern, most eastern part of uh, Hokkaido, uh, is, there's many wild wilderness and it's called Konsen area, uh, meaning Nemuro and Kushiro, which is the largest two large cities in this part. And there's many marsh, big marshes and coastal wetlands. And it's also a good place to see uh, seabirds. And going to the north, there's a uh, Ohotsuku area. Uh, this is well known for the drift ice uh, in the sea. There are many good coastal wetlands uh, like Tofutsuko and Komukeko and Salomako. And uh, of course, it's a good place to see water birds. And lastly, uh, there's a Teshio Plain area uh, with a very big, uh, another marsh, Sarobets Marsh. And also it's a good place to see seabirds. Uh, it's also famous for, Tewi Island is a very famous place for seabird colonies. So talking about geese, uh, I'd like to introduce some uh, species. One is the Brent geese, which you may know, uh, the Orientalis, the Black Brent. Uh, this picture is from the rocky shore area of the southern Hokkaido, near Hakodate, another large city in Hokkaido. And this is a wintering place for this brand case, uh, but you, you could uh, see tens and maybe hundreds of geese in the coastlines. But uh, a better place to see the brand geese is this eastern part of Hokkaido, the Notsuke Bay area. It's a very big staging area for the brand geese, maybe like 8,000 to 10,000 of geese. And because this is a staging area, the eastern side is a staging area, uh, there's many big flocks, but there's less numbers in the wintering sites, also in the northern part of the main island of uh, Japan. So 
the burnt geese was a very mysterious bird. We didn't know where the geese wintered or where it was breeding, but uh, we are now working on this uh, tracking uh, project and we are getting, starting to get good results. And we are now more sure where they are wintering or the, where they're breeding. <clears throat> and this is a very cute bird when you take it on hand. And another geese is the cackling geese. Uh, it was once extinct from Japan, but it was uh, reintroduced to the uh, to the Aleutian Islands of the breeding area. And now the population has recovered to like 10,000 individuals. And you can see big flocks in this Tokachi area, yeah, but you could see uh, family flocks also in the Ishikari Plain area where I'm based in. <clears throat> Another geese species that have recovered recently is the snow geese. Uh, it used to be in very big numbers in the wintering areas, also in the Tokyo Bay. Uh, it, they, they said that uh, there was so many snow geese that it looked like there was snow in the sea in the Tokyo Bay, but it was uh, nearly extinct. But recently the recovery program has been succeeded and maybe there's about uh, 5,000, no, no, maybe, no, I don't know, thousands of geese uh, now wintering in Japan. And most of the population, staging population, you could see in this, also in the Tokachi area. But recently we can find a family fox also in the Ishikari Plains. <clears throat> Okay, the more numer numerous geese is the tundra geese. This is the Seriostris subspecies, uh, chubby kind of uh, bill. And many of these geese are staging in the Hotsk region and also in the Eastern uh, coastline uh, near Kominami-san's place. Uh, they roost in the coastal uh, brackish lakes and feed in the these uh, cornfields, and this is what they look at. Their foraging areas is like this. And another subspecies, the middendorfs, which I like, uh, uh, with a more slender forehead to the bill, and it has much larger body size. They're more in the Ishikari area and also in the Tokachi Plains, and also in the Sarobetsu area. And unlike the tundra fingies, uh, they also forage in the farmlands, but they generally prefer to feed in the, these marshy habitats, feeding on uh, water chestnuts and the roots of the wild rice. And even the uh, old uh, bird watchers and ornithologists didn't uh, really uh, differentiate the subspecies, but the hunters, uh, the old hunters in Japan, uh, differentiated the subspecies, calling this uh, taiga bingus, uh, numataro, numa means swamp, uh, swamp geese, and the tundra uh, geese, Bingus, which feed in open habitats, they called okahishiki, which means the uh, grassy hill area bingus. So the old people, the old hunters were very keen on uh, spotting birds, identifying birds. And the lesser white fronted geese, uh, still we don't have much numbers, but you can see them in this pasture area in the Sarobets area, Sarobets Marsh. Uh, but may in numbers of uh, tens and less than hundreds. <clears throat> 
And last of all, the greater white front geese, my uh, favorite species, which I'm working on. Uh, you could see very big numbers. They're not very, they're very common species, but they're in big numbers in this Ishikari plain area. And they feed on uh, leftover rice grains in the paddy fields and roost in uh, freshwater inland lakes. And this is my place uh, near Sapporo, 60 kilometers from Sapporo. It's a very small lake, uh, 25 hectares in the water surface. But, uh, and this is my uh, office. This is what it looks like right now. It's, it has very much snow, uh, one meter to two meters. But in March, uh, the snow will melt and the five first arrivals will be the tundra swans, which may be like uh, 6,000 6, to 8,000. And after this uh, swan season, then will come the greater white fronted goose season. And uh, peak numbers can be like 85,000 uh, individuals in a very small lake. And also there are a few of these rare species also in Miyajima Numa is a Ramsar site because of this uh, staging area. So this is the morning fight of the This is when they come back. But I'm too busy this time of the day because I'm counting. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, at the uh, daytime, also the geese come back from the paddy fields to take a rest. So many bird watchers and photographers uh, come to see this uh, flocks of geese in very close distance. And in springtime, uh, because there are much ducks and also fish to feed on, there's many uh, these eagles, the sea eagles and the white-tailed eagles. They can be like uh, in tens and hundreds at some time. After the geese season, uh, there's many grassland and farmland uh, breeding birds, uh, including the Latham spike snipe. And, but the Latham snipes uh, was very common, but they have decreased after the wildfire in Australia. But the other birds are very uh, common in this area. Okay, this is my uh, visitor center. And there are uh, wetland centers in many parts of Hokkaido uh, in almost in every Ramsar site in Hokkaido. So it's a good source of information. And well, uh, Hokkaido is a good place for you know, wetlands and water birds, but there are of course many threats to the birds. And one emerging threat is the renewable energy, the wind farms. And in the northern part, there are many wind farms right now and still being planned. And this is the place where I'm uh, working on right now in the southern part of Hokkaido. Uh, this is a very uh, important migratory route for the migratory water birds. Uh, this is a habitat for more than 230 
uh, bird species and many rare species also including the breeding marsh harriers and red crested crown cranes and also the brown shrikes, uh, which only breed in Japan, I guess. And this is beginning to be a very big problem. Okay, that's about the end of my talk, but I would like to add that uh, there's a new online resource uh, for nature-based tourism in Japan. Uh, it's called People, Wetlands, and Wildlife. And in this uh, webpage, you could see many uh, good video footages uh, including some of the wetlands and waterfowl, waterbird uh, habitats I introduced. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Tatsumi. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, while we were watching the video, the geese sounds so loud that we couldn't hear you at all, actually. <laughs> But it, it's really amazing, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to take the question later on. So I'll move on to the um, east side of Hokkaido from Yuki. So the floor is yours, Kominami-san, please. Yes, thank you. So my name is uh, Yuki Hiro Kominami. Uh, from uh, eastern part of, of Hokkaido. So uh, let me introduce the birding spots of Nemro. Fascinating uh, bird spots uh, area in eastern Hokkaido. So Ima screen or share, she ought to stay must Oh, good. She is. <laughs> is it okay? Yeah, thank you. That's okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I can see oh. the screen now. Thank you. Okay. So let's start. So, uh, as uh, uh, Katsumi san, uh, just uh, whole of Hokkaido. So this is the uh, eastern part of Hokkaido. Um, there are so many uh, areas for good balancing spots have spots. And uh, this area, Nemuro city, is uh, the city I live in and work. Uh, so this in very fascinating, I think. So Nemuro City is situated from uh, Nakasude Airport. From uh, it takes half half hours and uh, uh, half hours, uh, one and a half hours by bus from Nakasude Airport. The Nemuro consists of uh, peninsula and area around Lake Fuden, so very big lake wetland. Nemuro City uh, sometimes referred as Badland. The reason for this is the large number of bird species that can be seen in Nemuro. In Japan, uh, there are about 600 630 species of birds that have been recorded in Japan. Of these, uh, 306 species have been recorded in Nemuro, only Nemuro. This means that more than 50% of birds, Japan birds, which uh, widely spread from north to south, can be seen in only 
，啊，念不了了。We also have a lambda site in、uh, Nebula City. Uh, first of all,、uh, let me introduce you to the Fulen Lake area. This area is registered as wetland of international important importance under the Ramsar Convention. Many species of birds,、uh, both water birds and non-water birds, can be seen here without the abyss、uh, throughout the four seasons. Oh, this is the cooling area. Lake Cooling is a very big、uh, lake. The third is the largest lake in Japan, and second largest, second largest blackest lake in Hokkaido. And、uh, A wide range of、uh, breasts in natural environment、uh, remains. And、uh, Shunkunitai.、Uh, this is the Shunkunitai, a spit of sand and divides Memoro Bay and Lake Fure. Like this. this is the sea of Kursk,、uh, uh, Memoro Bay.、Um, This is the like、feeling. 小南さん、なんか、yes. はい、時々すごい声が小さくなったり、はい、あその方向で喋ったら大丈夫です。あはい、向きですね。多分。そう、はい、I'm sorry. So, so s h u n k u i t a is a sound speech and device t e m o r a l bay and like f o o l i n that have、uh, some. Uh, 600 hectares and eight、uh, kilometers long, and width is up to 1.5 kilometers. It contains a diverse natural environment shaped by its complex topography. And, Uh, this is my office,、uh, nature center. So I work well, I work on this、uh, office to you know, investigate some、uh, nature of the green sky and introduce people to、oh, the wonderful nature of the green sky. In Shunkunita, you can find all seven types of natural environments that exist in eastern Hokkaido. These are、uh, coniferous forests, b r o o d e d forests, grasslands,、uh, bogs,、uh, lake and marshes, and tiger flat and salt marshes. This is a、uh, forest in Shunkunitai.、Uh, the forest of Shunkunitai is made of very big trees. Here are many birds, such as、uh, black woodpecker, some of the world's largest woodpecker, and other forest birds, like this. And there is some color. The white eagles can be seen all year around in Shunkunitai. They build huge nests on the trees and raise their young in the forest. And they catch and eat fish. And water birds like black tailed gulls and ducks beside the sea.
and lakes. In summer, the coast is filled with beautiful flowers and variety of birds and uh, mammals can be seen, like it. So red foxes and some grass and birds like it, skylarks, grasshopper warbles, stone chips, and common cuckoo. And so many yeah. At the end of the summer, veins that have been raising their cheeks deep in the marsh come out with their families to the lake. Let come quaint. In the middle of the autumn, the salt marsh is a bit very colored by the uh, grass board. Junkunitai and Lake Pudding are home to many shrubs in the late summer to autumn. Thousand shrubs drops in and out. So we have some um, 40, maybe 40 species of shrubs uh, the migrate species of lake. Um, at the end of the autumn, many geese, ducks, swans also stop by uh, like food. Okay. In early winter, seagulls such as glaucusville, sea ducks such as long tailed duck, and grebes as horned grebes are often seen on the coast. And we, uh, there's so many uh, stress sea eagles from Russia come to winter in uh, Lake Fulin area. At this time of the year, the lake is frozen over and fishermen and drive out onto the ice, make a square hole, and set up a fishing net under the ice. Under the ice, uh, the fishermen then use these nets to catch the edible fish under the ice, like this. Uh, in edible fish that are caught in this fishery are left on the ice. These provide the sea eagles with food during the harsh winter months. Lake Valley is also a fishing ground for many marine resources in the, the tidal flats and Shunkunitai fishermen catch many shellfish and shrimp. Here, it is common to see fishermen and cranes digging for the shellfish side by side. So far, I have introduced you to the bows of both at Buren Lake and Shunkunitai. Nemoro also has a number of other attractive birding spots. For example, uh, there is Cape Nosap, the easternmost point of the Japanese mainland. Here, this is a uh, bird high, and we, you, you can see, you can observe many seabirds like this. If you're interested in sea bears and don't get seasick, I recommend a nature cruise that takes the boat from Ochish boat to the Pacific Ocean. On this cruise, you can see sea bears that 
you don't often see in Japan accepting memory. Now that's what the uh, Meiji Park uh, in downtown Nemuro is also a very good bird watching po point. The park is popular among the citizens as a place where they can easily visit and see a variety of birds. So, or at turn grassland falls like this. There are many more places I'd like to introduce you, but time is running out, so I will end my story here. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Yuki. Um, I just posted the Ochi Ishi Nature Cruise. Um, that boat is really good, um, especially to watching. Oh, Yuki san, can you see the puffins as well from the Ochi Ishi Nature Cruise? Do they go to the island? Oh, uh, no. Uh... That's a different so, one. So the island is the protected area. Yeah. area so uh, we cannot so land uh, without permission. And so on the cruise, uh, they uh, go around. Mm. The island. Uh, uh, yes, island. Yeah. And well, so just on the sea. <laughs> yeah. Well, as a nature guide, that cruise is great. Yeah. Um, the, the, the guide is perfect and uh, they know all the things to watch. Mm -hmm. So that's I, I really strongly recommend. Then the point is the website uh -huh. of the boat is not that good. <laughs> so I just, that's only, only PDF which means uh -huh. it's a rare, really rare information that I want to share with you. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you very much uh, for you to your presentation. And from now on, what well, Victor said, it would be a um, um, panel discussion, but it's gonna be a, just a simple question to ask uh, from myself. And then my question to two of you are, um, what are the good seasons to visit? Then I want two answers from you to each other. Then one is the best season, which is so unique to the place, like the geese season coming to the little pond. And then the other one is the alternative season. I mean that the best season must be really crowded so when and where should you go for other enjoyment in other seasons? That's my question to Katsumi-san first, please. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, of course, the best season in my place, Miyajima Numa, is the geese season, which is uh, late April and mm. spring. And in fall, in autumn, it will be... Uh, early October and uh, that's the geese season, but another season may be the, uh, in June uh, where, where you could see all the open habitat breeding birds. And well, June is the best season in Hokkaido. The weather is perfect and the breeding birds are nice. And June is, I think, is good for everywhere in Hokkaido. Right. Will you be there at the nature center? If yes. We want to go? yes of <laughs> That's course. very important, isn't it? <laughs> right. I see. Thank you very much. How about you, Kisan, for your yes. uh, site? So I think uh, so. every month is very good in Nemuro. <laughs> but 
<laughs> but so as Katsumi san uh, uh, mentioned, uh, so the, uh, June is the best season. So breeding uh, summer visitors, uh, birds, and uh, also Nemo. And so there are so many songs, uh, plenty of songs uh, in grasslands or forest. And so easy to see uh, every species. And so, so, so important point, I think, in Japan. So there are so, not so many rain in June. Mm, other than another part of Japan, uh, June is uh, rainy season in, in Japan. So many uh, so Japanese come to Hokkaido to the fine weather. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so June, Sorry. June in Japan, most of the other area of Japan is a rainy season. Yes. And then Hokkaido, we don't have rainy season. It's all fine. So the domestic people often come up to Hokkaido in that time. So that may be a bit crowded. That's what we think. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, we have a question from Sun Yang's. Is there any program? Fit especially for winter in Nemuro. Oh. Mm. Yes. So I introduce some. So uh, every uh, January uh, we have some um, to, uh, Nemuro Badland Festival. Yes. Uh, like this. Uh, to, これで見てますかね。ケンシー。ケンシー。ケンシー。ケンシー。ケンシー。ケンシー。ケンシー。ケンシー。ケンシー。ケンシー。ケンシー。ケンシー。ケンシー。ケンシー。ケンシー。ケ
So there are sites which is open to anyone, of course, but they are also a really um, um, sacred area, secret area, but mm. Yuki may be able to take you there too. Oh, <laughs> within mm. within now, but he said no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe in so um mm. the Shang Kuni Yeah, yeah, yeah. In his mm. area. Mm. Anyway, um, well, I'm waiting for any other questions from you guys, if you like. Well, yeah, uh, please raise your hand if you have any question. Okay. Well, I have a question to um, Katsumi-san. You mentioned about hunters. Is it hunting allowed in Hokkaido? Oh, well, hunting in general is allowed uh, to authorize hunters, but uh, uh, much of the geese species are protected. So geese hunting is not allowed in Hokkaido and also in Japan. So hunting is okay, but it's, it's uh, restricted. I mean, there's the, the law you know, regulate the, the hunting behavior. Is that right? Yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, any questions from you guys? Scott? Yes, Scott, please. Yeah, I was just wondering if at the early stage you said Hokkaido in the old days was had a very an indigenous population and Japanese people came later. Could you give us a little, is there still an indigenous population there and any uh, comments on the culture of that area? Yeah, yeah. So I knew the indigenous people who has been here for, well, um, that researchers said after 13 centuries, but still there have been people all the time anyways. And then now, yes, there are Ainu people still, um, but they have had quite hard time by the Japanese government by like um, banned their culture and their languages. And then actually Ainu language is um, one of the most endangered languages in the world at the moment. Um, there are actually no fluently speaking Ainu people. Um, I have been learning Ainu language in the last 20 years, actually. But uh, what we do is uh, we listen to the tape and then write down the words. And then, um, well, the, the researcher, they know the meaning, but we ask the meaning and the words to elders and then then elder says well my grandparents actually said so i remember that's how we kind of uh, check the actual research and their culture well but um however in the last 20 years i knew culture has been uh, recognized really well the japanese government recognized it and um, they have built a national Ainu museum in Hokkaido. So now it's going up and going really better. Um, but surprisingly, um, the Japanese government recognized Ainu as an indigenous culture in, in Hokkaido in year 2008. So it's pretty late. So now, now we are really building up our recognition to Ainu. That's what we are at, I think. Thanks. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we have questions from uh, Herbert. Herbert had so many questions. Kazu, um, you answer the questions? Um, where is there a bird guides club in Japan? Is it? Well, I can't. Uh, yeah. Hang on, where do I start from? I'm just... <laughs> I'll ask the question. Yeah, please say. <laughs> Thanks. My first question is uh, Is there any 
International Birding Festival in Japan, an international birding festival, like maybe happens annually, or something we call maybe International Birding Festival or Expo in Japan. Number two, uh, do you have a club in Japan? Is there a bad guys club in Japan? Number three. Oh, I can't hear you now, but um, I now I know where to start. So, well, Katsumi-san, can you answer the question? If you know anything about the bird guides club and stuff? Oh, oh okay. Maybe uh, minami -san. About the bird fair. I yeah. know there's one big bird fair, but uh, in Chiba, uh, there's a ornithological museum. Oh, and... Wait a wait a second. Um, Hubbard is kind of um, <laughs> frozen at the moment. Okay. I wonder if he's hearing one. Oh, he's gone. Mm -hmm, he's gone. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so save that question later. <laughs> How about any questions? Um, right, people want to know um, how people hunt and oh, yeah, with yeah. guns or uh, with any weapons, tools. Ask my uh, Philip. Yeah, Katsumi san. Yeah, Katsumi san. What was that? Hunting? Yeah, how people hunt. You know, what, what tool are they using? Guns or um, anything? Oh, well, hunting in general is not a big uh, community in Japan, but uh, uh, there's a small population of people hunting uh, ducks. Mm -hmm. And of course, they use uh, air guns and shot, shot what, what do you call that? Uh, rifles. Right. Yeah, rifles. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but in the old times, they were using these nets. Mm. We still use them to catch geese for mm -hmm. research activities. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, hunting in Hokkaido, the biggest one is deer hunting to control the population of deer. We used to have um, uh, wolves to, to wolves, but it's extinct. And then now there's no enemy for deer. So now we have to hunt to control the population. Otherwise they eat all the vegetation. That's the big issue at the moment. Then besides they are hunting for birds, but it's only like duck hunting. And yeah, I, to be honest, I don't know much about the birds hunting actually. Anything um, you key some about hunting? Well, if you know. <laughs> oh, sorry, I don't know about okay. uh, so game. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Herbert is back. <laughs> yeah, Herbert is back. Yes. So um, Katsumi-san carrying on about the club and them. So is there, so Katsumi-san, is there yes, a yes. bird guide, bird guys club in Japan in this question? Oh, I don't, I yeah. don't really know about the bird guide club. Yeah, club I don't know either. Because I'm not a bird guide, I'm a wetland kind of people and <laughs> but there is a network of wetland managers and researchers and uh, and women birders uh, there's many women birders uh -huh. mm -hmm. and about the bird fair there's a big bird fair in Chiba uh, near Tokyo there's an ornithological museum and they're having an annual big uh, bird fair and also there's a bird fair in Coming up, that's true. <laughs> yeah, about birthday, uh, to my Thank understanding, you. I know in, in, in January is uh, Nemro Festival, and in May it is um, organized by Wild Birds of Japan, so, uh, Tokyo, Tokyo Pole Bird Park uh, Bird uh -huh. Festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then in September, I guess, September or October, this the uh, Japan Bird Festival in Apico City. Hmm. Uh, then, then Okinawa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Haruhaki san knows that, you know, he, he's one of the organizers of the, the, uh, the bird fair in Okinawa. 
Okay. There, 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 yes. Thank you very much for your introduction. Then, nice to meet you. Thank you very much for a very wonderful presentation. I'm from Okinawa. It is very uh, different uh, uh, climate. Now, uh, snow in Hokkaido, but uh, Okinawa is uh, about 20. Uh, today, yeah, these days, very cold, but uh, more than, more than uh, 50 degrees Celsius. But we uh, we feel that we feel that very cold. A bit comfortable, huh? <laughs> <laughs> feel that very cold. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much for a very good, good presentation and very interesting Hokkaido. My wife like Hokkaido very much, and uh, we went to Hokkaido several times already. But I never saw claim. Uh, this is one of the uh, my yeah, uh, <laughs> most uh, uh, most hoping to see bird in Hokkaido because this is also the uh, national carrier bird image. True, yeah. yeah national yeah. carrier bird, national carrier bird. Yeah. Well, crane as a, as a nature guide, it's a very um, friendly bird. Mm -hmm. It's easy to show <laughs> to start with. <laughs> so, so yeah. Yeah, please come to Hokkaido and then, well, we can show you. Uh, I sometimes, already I text, uh, already I check some uh, web, also the some uh, papers, and I, I mean a magazine. Mm. It's fa very famous place is uh, Nemulo, Nemulo, right? Nemulo Marsh area. Also, the yeah. other place, I mean, uh, near Sapporo, near big city, also people can watch the plane. Uh, maybe, I mean, uh, wild, in the wild. Uh, you mean maybe Kushiro? Ku uh, Kushiro. Yeah, Kushiro, yes, yes, yes. Kushiro. Yeah, Kushiro. So many yes, people yes, yes, yes. confused. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Nemuro uh, and Kushiro. So, so in which uh, uh, there are few uh, cranes. Uh, remains uh, so many of the cranes go to uh, Kusiro area and uh, win winter there and some uh, artificial feeding by artificial mm -hmm. feeding mm -hmm. and I think uh, there are many so spring in uh, Kusiro area so they are not frozen uh, mm. with bulk uh, is uh, so many in Kushiro. And Nemuro is so, so frozen, frozen. <laughs> all okay. around. And <laughs> they cannot uh, so take uh, the foods in okay. winter, maybe. Mm. Thank you very much. I, I'm not good at the uh, geography of the Hokkaido. I'm very sorry. You're in the south. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we have more questions. Um, are there a growing number of young birders or growing number of bird watchers or bird photographers in Japan or Hokkaido? What do you think? Um, Katsumi-san or Yuki-san, do you think? Yeah, oh, well, I, I don't think the numbers are growing, uh, but there are young birders mm. and many people with uh, photographers, but I don't think it's uh, growing in numbers. Mm. True. I agree. <laughs> okay, well, um, my friend, so the bird watching guides or bird watching or photographer guides are actually, um, they are, how do you say, so now they can make it businesses now. Mm -hmm. So more um, inbound tourists are asking guys to show around. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing mm -hmm. uh, here happening in Hokkaido at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, next question, 
Is, uh, yes. Excuse me, cousin, we have a question from uh, Absolute Wild. Well, I think it's, it's Philip. He said that uh, he want to ask Kasumi uh, Sang, what's the good duration for a good birding tree? Oh, yeah. <laughs> True. Duration. Right. Which means how long? How, how long? Yeah. Oh, how long? long? Well, longer oh. the better, I think. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> because Hokkaido is, uh, you know, quite quite big. Uh, it takes time uh, traveling from the international airport in the central part to the eastern part. And so maybe, what do you say? <laughs> One week or 10 hey, days? Mm -hmm. Often, hey, mom. so the eastern Hokkaido and the bird watching guide recommend one week at least Could if you have a particular bird to watch. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. So at least one week. Yeah. yeah, I or think even, so. Or even longer. Right. Mm. So about, about birding in Hokkaido, um, we, 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 we stay on the island or we, we, we take boat trip to see seabirds? Well, if you want to watch seabirds, boats. <laughs> but otherwise, um, there are particular spots to show you for the, the, the terrestrial birds. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I found boats in like Nemuro area or the Shiretoko area. Mm -hmm. uh, Good. <laughs> it's not only birds, you can see some whales and stuff sometimes. Neko Minami san. Yes. <laughs> so, so in Shiretoko area, so you can see some sea mammals, uh, so orca or whales mm -hmm. or uh, seals mm -hmm. also. Oh, so they. Uh, 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 rare to see in Nemuro, but uh, Nemuro is that's a rare species. Nemuro have uh, that's a rare species in uh, seabirds, I think. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Um, before we go in on taking more questions, let's take a group photo at this moment. Okay, so, uh, guys, would you please turn on your camera? Philip, yes, thank you. Uh, Kohara san. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Combo, are you still there with us? Combo? Combo is sleeping. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys. Yes. Right, yeah, the tip is that you know, look at the camera. All right. And smile. One, two, three. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, so we can have more questions. <laughs> I know in chat. Yep. <laughs> Any questions, guys? So, yes. Uh, Q1, yes, please. You want, you, you're mute. Right. Okay, thank you. thank you so much. Hello, Kasumi. <laughs> Long time to see you. Yeah, okay, right, so, right. yeah, yeah it's, I'm sure Hokkaido is the best place to, uh, yeah, it's bird watching and ecotourism. So you have so many places, but uh, I think uh, if the overseas or overseas persons, people want to go to Hokkaido, and then uh, I think we use some arrange some uh, one week trip or ten day trip around uh, Hokkaido because uh, uh, anyway such kind of program we need for the overseas because you have uh, many good places here and there so we cannot choose which season or how many days which place. So do you have any plan or 
uh, uh, the example like uh, the Ramsar site tour in Hokkaido or whatever tour or this tour in Hokkaido. Do you have any such a plan? That's my question. Yeah, hi. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not uh, directly involved in such activities, but in Hokkaido, there's many uh, projects that uh, are making uh, such uh, nature-based tours for foreigners. So I think... Uh, they there are some activities like that but i'm not involved in so i'm not really sure i'm sorry hey, what about Kazu? yes so well i'm not a bird person so <laughs> <laughs> i may not be able to you know find what you want to see however we do um adventure tours also i have a good friend of mine um doing good bird watching so I can introduce good guys for sure. Yeah. Okay. So can Thank can you. I edit, Victor? Yeah. Sure. Is it okay? Yeah, it's gone. Yes. Yeah. There's a, because when I visit uh, Kushiro uh, almost ten years ago, at that time I met so many Korean photographers at there. But. Even in Korea, we we uh, didn't know each other, but wow. the photographers they visit uh, for the a picture, but we are well important or uh, bird people visit to see the bird. The both people just visit the same place but the different purpose. So I think uh, Hokkaido, you have so many places. That's why, like uh, ABF or for the target to the ecotourism uh, target of bird watching. Mm. And then we need more uh, focusing uh, information at least uh, or to share the, such a skill. So, so that's why I'm just uh, suggesting my suggestion make my questions. It's, it's okay, it's no answer, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, thank you very much. All right, guys. Uh, it's about that. Oh, yes, Sun Yong, Sun Yong. Sun is a question. Yes, Sun Yong, please. Yeah, thank you so much. It's, uh, uh, it's very nice to meet you, uh, everybody. So I just want to add to Kangwon's comment. Actually, we met many Korean birders, especially for cranes in Kushiro area. Uh, actually, we didn't know each other, never met in Korea. So I just wonder about uh, if, you, uh, if you have any. Uh, uh, educational program or educational orientation for photographers, especially to take a picture of the birds uh, in Hokkaido or Kushiro area, because it, Kushiro is very important for a crane habitat. That's a good point. Do you do it, Yuki-san, in your center? <laughs> uh, so I don't have some program for the photographer, uh, but uh, so we hold some um, about the when when I uh, hold uh, about the Ching tour, so first of all, the beginning at the beginning of the uh, tour, uh, I so say some the manners to the wildlife or birds to 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 not bother the birds or some uh, wildlife. Mm. Mm, but I think so. So many photographers uh, do not come to our uh, program. So that's a problem, I think. Yeah, so it's only when um, we, we are asked, isn't it? 
if we don't get asked, the individual um, photographer, we have no control. Yeah, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But of course, if if um, they are our customers, of course we do uh, lectures. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll just add that there may be a educational program for uh, tourists in the Shiretoko area, uh, which is the natural heritage area, uh, but not all, all over the Ramsar sites in Hokkaido. So I think uh, I will have to learn from them. Mm. Okay, thank you guys. And Mike? One last question, Mike. Uh, one last question from FB Live from Yokim Mui Liu. Do the native or migratory birds have any special meaning or significance to the Ainu people's livelihood or culture? Oh dear, do you know anything, Katsumi-san or Yuki-san? <laughs> yes, I think uh, the Ainu people uh, treat the wildlife as gods. And for the geese, which I'm involved in, uh, the Ainu people welcome the geese because when the geese arrives in fall, uh, it's, it, it means that they're, it's salmon season, which they, with wow. salmon yeah. uh, from the river, from the ocean to the river. And because the Ainu people rely very much on the salmon, uh, when the geese comes, it means that the geese will bring fortune which means the salmons to them. So the nature is all connected to the Ainu people, I guess. Cool. Thank Thanks. you. All right, guys, uh, it's late. So we, we have big hands to our speakers. Great presentation. Thank you, Arigato. Thank you. It makes a great beginning the new session of APIP Online Talk. Really appreciate friends from Hokkaido. And hopefully we can meet very soon in Hokkaido, everyone. So um, can we take one last group photo, right? Just do it properly. <laughs> Arakaki-san, Philip. Hello, Philip. Change the songs, yeah, right? Can we Okay. okay. Philip. Philip, yes, we have Philip here. Thank you. Okay. I don't know who is the guest. Kasubi Sang, you're cute. Very good. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Maya. Look at the camera, all right? One, two, three, guys. Thank you very much. Once again. Thank you. Thank you for supporting. And see you guys next week. Next week, Thank we're you. going to uh, mainland Japan. Uh, oh. Speaker will be uh, Kensuke Tanaka. We look Kensuke. forward to seeing you guys next week. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Mike. You. Thank you, Victor. Bye. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice one now. Thank you. Nice weekend. Kensuke uh, Tanaka. Bye.